Hello everyone and we're going to be talking about again Portia Williams <laughs> and what she is serving us up in the latter part of her book. Okay this particular episode we're going to be talking about her actually giving us a play-by-play -play of how she met Dennis McKinley, her baby daddy, okay, PJ's dad, child, and who pretty much put them on to each other. She's basically telling us, from what I read, that she got finished taping a show of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, and Dom, her assistant, was with her. And some other person uh, by the name of Jeremy uh, had wanted Lauren, Dom, and her to go out after the taping of the show when she got off. And she was like, okay, cool. Let's go for it. Let's do this, you know. Because um, at first she was just tired and stuff. But then, you know, he promised her a good time. And it was a nice club that she had never been to before. And she would enjoy herself. And that club scene was actually one of Dennis McKinley's establishments at the time and I think he had like forewarned or foretold Dennis about Portia or whatnot and uh, just at that chance meeting they had an opportunity to meet because you know I guess they're not in the same circle of friends and when he's having time to uh, do Portia's hair makeup whatever he goes into other directions of Georgia uh, which takes you know away from him introducing them but this one particular night after she was taping they called themselves going out for a little club action and uh, everybody was involved with going uh, Portia invited Dom which was her assistant at the time and it may have been Lauren her sister or it might be Lauren the assistant that she had prior or after Dom, I should say. So it must have been Lauren, but I put her sister. I put the assistant in there instead of her sister. But um, she said, uh, like, Jeremy was the one that actually did her, I think it was her makeup. And it was Lauren and my makeup artist. So, and then my assistant turned friend, Dom. So it, it couldn't have been that Lauren. It must have been her sister, Lauren. But Hannah, she said that. Dennis told her he loved her after their first meeting at a restaurant. And he took her back home to his uh, industrial type apartment loft he had. And he had all these different wall hangings. And she, she felt that he was a cultured person. But she could kind of tell about that when they were having conversations during when they were having dinner and stuff of that nature. And, you know, he was just like all into her she was all into the him they had talked about uh sharing stories of or really just information whether one or the other had family members and did you know as far as what his outlook was on blending family members with you know, having children one day or did he have any children because of just went straight forward and of course he said he didn't have any children but he wanted children meaning plural uh, one day and you know she was he was telling her about her mom his mom and all that and she was just you know like loving on him because he loved his mom and she loved her mom and she was telling him she wanted kids one day as well children plural and she thought they were just a matching hip so Portia's really on this thing when she meets a man and he checks everything off her checklist that she has formulated uh, the particular man had to have if she wanted to be involved with him She's done it with several men in this book as well as probably the one she had left out Every opportunity when she meets somebody she just put them on the pedestal of this may be her future husband And she's gonna go check every box um, And sign off and then just see where it leads her and as we can tell Far as what we know of her today as of February 5th, 2022, she is with a glorified boyfriend, Simon Gobadia, who happens to feel that he is a billionaire and he's letting Portia live with him in their, considered his words, not mine, 
their home but her name is not nowhere on that um deed of that home okay and he's lavished her with n nice gifts accessories and car uh, a car i should say and she thinks she has found her forever after but that's what she felt she uh, found with dennis mckinley when she called herself getting impregnated with his sperm to produce a baby okay which we know that baby now is baby pj and she looks just like both of them beautiful baby okay but if we go back way on back maybe a couple of years back uh she gives us instructions on pretty much how she met him okay so we go on into that chapter where she said um let me see okay it is uh, okay let's see but leave to okay it said when i first met dennis mckinley we had fire chemistry it was actually after taping a reunion for real housewives of atlanta when i bumped into mckinley that's what my stylist jeremy haynes called him now i don't remember i don't remember a, a stylist or a hairstylist no it was her stylist or her wardrobe stylist jeremy haynes i don't remember a, a male um dressing her ever but okay maybe she just left that out uh that he was never really shown um on the show but um she said he uses his last name when he first told me about this handsome bachelor who owned a couple of clubs in atlanta when jeremy said let's go to the club after filming the reunion for 14 hours straight i said eff it why not i just finished arguing with these uh women for four hours or four hours let's get drunk see that's a statement uh portia's not mine she still loves, she thinks anytime she has to have a good time, it has to be toasted up with a bottle of bubbly. You see what I'm saying? Why you can't just have a Sprite? Why you just can't have a ginger ale? Hell, water. Okay, you just said she had been working 14 hours straight. You need rest and food, probably. That's what you needed. But she's sitting up there, let's go get drunk. Let's go party. Uh, not her words, not mine. She said, let's go get drunk. All right? Go on and says, it didn't matter that I had on a black Adidas tracksuit because I refused to be uncomfortable for a second longer. At least I was in full hair and makeup. Now, why do Portia always have to give us a description of what type of status she's on? Like when she was in, I did a video uh, about Samuel Jackson. She, instead of her saying she was just on a plane, she met him, this, that, and the third. She had to make sure that... She, in this book, she let us know she was in first class. Okay? And I'm like, what's wrong with Coach? Hell, what's wrong with the back part? You're still on the same damn plane. And it can crash and everybody can be killed the same damn way. Okay? Unless they go nose diving, Then the first class, people are going to get it first. Alright? So, I don't understand why she had to always put those little pinpoints in there. Just like uh, she wanted us to know her attire. Why you got to let us know you're a labor hoe? You know what I'm saying? Why it can't just have been a, a black jumpsuit or a black track shoot, shoot, suit? Why you had to say a black Adidas one? You know, it's just like you got to throw out everything. Let some things be a surprise. Because we know on you, you just want the best of everything and every designer. Don't matter the cost or anything. Because half the time you ain't paying for it. Somebody else is paying for it. Maybe a male. But anyway, going back, it said, um, at least I was uh, in full hair and makeup by the time that jeremy lauren my makeup artist and my assistant turned friend dom walked into dream dream was the club that he was owning at the time if anybody knew back where he lived in atlanta back then it was a nice club when it opened up but then it started getting ratchet okay but um she said we walked into dream we were looking for a good time when we first walked into dream it was kind of a look like fairy women when we first walked to dream it kind of looked like a fairy tale everything looked really whimsical there were clouds and oversized mushrooms on the wall it looked like we had just stepped into a gentleman's club built by willy wonka i was drinking away the fact that every other girl in there was dressed up looking cute while i was in a track suit track suit with jeremy uh and when jeremy told me that we were about to meet the owner i wasn't playing paying too much attention though i met plenty of club owners doing bookings over the years so i shook dennis hand and kept it moving it hadn't clicked yet that this was the name or this was the same man mckinley 
Jeremy had just told me about. After a couple of hours of dancing to bass heavy music in the dim lights, I was getting sleepy. Having been at the reunion all day, I was ready to go. But when I stepped outside, I had a boot on my car. What the hell? A boot? I wasn't parked illegally or in a crazy spot or anything. It didn't make any sense to me. Jeremy ran back in the club, said he'll get McKinley to come and get this boot off your car. Later on, I found out that Dennis had put the boot on my car, so I had an excuse to talk to him later that night. He literally called the city so he could be the Superman and get the boot taken off. Sure enough, that night, Dennis came out there saying, Oh, I'll take care of it. I got you. I got you. Now, one thing about it, that would have been a determinant for me when I found out that he had put a boot on my car. That means he could have been doing something else, too, that I didn't like, just to be save a hoe. You know what I'm saying? So, I didn't too much like that, and I probably would have cussed him out and told him if he ever did that stuff again to get my attention or whatever. It would be a no-go for us in the future. But she thought that was like, you know, special or that was a, a different way of trying to get her attention uh, for him to have more time with her. And I'm like, Portia, 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 Portia. Ooh, child, I can see why you get into the degree of trouble that you get into with men. Because instead of you saying, sir, there were better ways for you to try to have time with me. Putting a boot on my car, making me get upset and, it, you know, um, and thinking about the money I had to pay when I know I didn't do anything wrong. You know, that was just piss poor of a play that you were trying to run down on me to have more time with me by acting like you saving a hoe. When actually you, 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 you created stress in my body at the time and I didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? But it just is what it is. Candy had told her about Dennis from the get-go. Uh, about what kind of guy he was. He wasn't a man to marry at this time. Because he loved serving up women. You know. He was an eligible bachelor. And he loved to sow his seed. But you know. Portia didn't, Portia didn't listen to that. She just saw owner of many business establishments. Looking like they're being well taken care of. So this individual could possibly take care of me. Portia you said that girl. You said that dummy. But anyway. Um. Dennis went on to say he got her, he took care of everything, and they left. And she goes on to say it was kind of genius. It showed me that Dennis was willing to get creative in order to get to know me a little bit better. From that night, when he also proposedly slipped his number into my friend's phone so I could call him later, it took about three months of playing phone tag and a couple of late night calls until we actually went out. So see, Portia... Dennis was already giving you the runaround because he was messing with other eligible or maybe not so eligible women in Atlanta that probably status was a little bit higher than yours because they were really doing it from the ground up. I mean, they were being self-made and weren't being put on a platform that made women, black women, look ratchet and disgusting and degrading and all of that. Dehum dehum uh, what do we call it? Dehumanizing women and their attributes okay because he didn't even want to be on the show it's kind of like you forced him to be on the show to be seen with you just like that fourth shot where you were taking him into the jewelry shop to make like he wanted to buy you a ring which it probably would have came on later on after dating him if that's where it was going to go but it's like you had put all these pieces together and he just need to walk with them and show and prove okay and about time or about that time, he could have fell in love with you. I mean, that's what I was getting from this chapter. Okay, but then going from there, after she said months, but, you know, Portia, months could be just like three weeks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or four weeks. It, it, you know, it's not the time of span that we're thinking about. Portia be already in the lower ranks when we're thinking she's giving us some months. But it could just be two or three weeks that this had transpired. But it goes on to say, when Dennis walked into McCormick and Schmidt, uh, Schmidt, Schmidt, a lovely seafood restaurant in Atlanta. Never heard of it. I got to ask my daughter about that. I barely even recognized him because when we met at his club, excuse me, at his nightclub, which he eventually shut down to open several other businesses, I was sleepy, tipsy, and ready to go home after seeing a boot on my car so when our eyes finally met in the restaurant i was taken aback in a good way he was handsome he had these little really warm eyes and a great smile just looking at him made me light up 
Now, see, I would have been questioning him of why did he shut down the club, okay? Uh, because was it not being lucrative? Uh, was it just a bit of a hassle for him? Uh, how, I would ask, how long did you have drain? And if you only had it less than a year, why did you, you know, even purposely get into an industry of that nature? You know what I'm saying? Because some clubs are just like restaurants in a sense. They have to be managed. They have to hold a certain capacity. And rules and regulations must be followed. And who don't like a good club here and there? I mean, when you get my age, no, that's not the same for you. Okay, and it's not because, you know, it's my really age. It's more so I have evolved from that situation. Don't like loud music. Don't like people brushing up on me. And, and don't like everybody just getting up in my face. And we're over that there. Oh, hell to the no-no. All right, but it just is what it is. Um, but she, it's like she was, you weren't in a daze when you got in there because you hadn't been drinking. You had just got finished taping from the Real Housewives of Atlanta show. So when you first met him and introduced to him, you would try to act like you didn't know who he was. When in fact, you know you knew who he was. You just try to act dumb and want to be hard to uh, catch. You was playing hard to get is what it was. But when you shook his hand, he said, McKinley, you had to make some type of eye contact portion. I mean, the clubs are kind of dim. Yes, it is. But I'm sure you were in a position where he was that close to you to shake your hand. He was more than six feet away. Uh, <laughs> you know, he was in your personal space. Okay. The kind of personal space you want somebody to be in if you like them or admire them in some kind of way. So that was just bullshit what you were talking about. You barely saw him. You knew him. The lights were so dim you couldn't tell. You couldn't get a good physical uh, viewpoint of him facially and all. But going back to the uh, storyline, she said at that first dinner we spoke about everything. We spoke about being entrepreneurs and how we both started off running businesses in the hair industry which i didn't realize we had in common that was when dennis dropped a little bomb on me you know our first time meeting each other wasn't at the club it wasn't nah she said uh no nah, he said we met at browner brothers yeah it must have been like four years ago he said smoothly i guess you thought i was trying to holler at you so you kind of brushed me off oh yeah then that was me that sounds like me like, no, that sounds stupid, Portia. That, that sounds pretty stupid. Okay, you could brush somebody off in a nice way. You don't have to be rude or arrogant about it. You just say you're not interested. You're seeing someone. You know, thank you. You know, whatever. But we see how you move and shake in these streets. But it goes back and say, oh, yeah, that, um, she says, then that was me. That sounds like me. I was at Bronner Brothers International Beauty Show, the largest exposition for black hair care professionals. In, uh, professionals in the country held every year in Atlanta promoting go naked hair which was only a couple of years old at that point meanwhile Dennis was there with Queen Virgin Remy a hair company company a hair care company he sold later it wasn't because the work boundaries I began on the set I began on the sets of those music videos back in my early 20s of the same work boundaries I had decades later and see what you're trying to put out now or trying to purposely put out now is that Dennis kind of start companies and then he ends them. And I'm like, now nah, I had read somewhere back in the day that he was hooked up with somebody uh, in a hair care business and uh, promoting with them. But it was a joint venture. It wasn't something he had by himself. So I'm like, you know, tell us the real story, Porsche. Don't be, get, you know, lighting it up for us. Gas lighting it and then it'd be something totally different. So come on, girl. Don't make him, I, I can see, she, you're trying to make him out to be this big, 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 big guy uh, in the industry in several uh, different arenas. But yet, you, you're kind of dissing it by telling us he only had it for this length of time and then he had to get rid of it. So I'm like, girl, was he actually the owner or something or was he co-owner or something? All right? Because like this uh, factory hot dog company he has, he's with his mama's doing this. Okay, he's not solidified in doing it on his own, but still, you have to give the guy his props. He's out there doing something and he's working from himself, so that's good. If you can get it together with someone else, good. If you can get it solo, that's even better. Uh, you're not split the check so many different ways, but it's just how she pulls him up, but just to let him let it back down. Like, we can see him up, and then she'll say something that makes us like subtract from that from what she said. But, of course, it's just her her uh, 
perspective her book so it's going to be her forum so she's going to set the scene and the tone for however it's going to be it's supposed to make her look good if she would have worked harder on that family matters it wouldn't have made her look such a horrific way and deemed, deemed her light well really turned off her light uh giving her a bad perspective of public opinion on how we view her now so if she took more care in formulating that show, it probably would have did better. But as we can see, she was just an EP in vain, an empty title, empty job assignment. And she didn't uh, learn, she didn't study, what do you call it? She didn't understand the assignment. <laughs> but anyway, going back to the article, um, or not the article, the book. She said at dinner, Dennis and I couldn't stop talking about we realized we were so much alike. We connected over being close with our moms and working with our moms. I didn't think about any of the things you're not supposed to ask first on the first day. I went straight for the tough questions. Do you have kids? He answered, no, but I want kids one day with the right person. Do you have any kids? He asked. She said, no, but I do want kids. Since we were the same age, I was a little shocked that he didn't have kids yet. But for some reason, it comforted me. I guess it put us on an even playing field, except for when it came to marriages. I told him I was divorced and that I starred in the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Do you watch it? And I'm like, Portia, you know, Atlanta is big in some way, but it's real small. Baby, if, if you watch TV, he knows, okay? But he tried to play the game with you. And he said, no, I don't really watch the show, but of course, I'm familiar. All right, so he knew who you were, girl. He knew who you was, and with him, his friend telling him about you, you know he knew who he was. Come like, who are you kidding? Who are you kidding right now, Portia? Okay, but the whole point where she was talking about, oh, you know, we were talking about our moms, and I'm like, looky, 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 who comes cookie? Now you couldn't get the mom to like you in aspects of because she saw you as wanting her son's money, which is their money at the time. So you know. We all see that you're not really what you are supposed to be portraying yourself to be. Or you wouldn't be in the situation that you are in now. Or it would have been very easy for you to sign that prenup. And then you could have been Mr. and Mrs. McKinley. But of course, you played your hand. It came up short. And now you're with your other boyfriend, Simon Gabadia. Which he ain't going to take it easy on you, baby, because he's too old. He wants to uh, stay in a lack of luxury that he's accustomed to. And he's not going to let somebody like you come in for his plans. All right. That's why you're not married to him. Because if you really, if he really was in love with you, he would go to the nearest courthouse in Fulton County or DeKalb County and marry you. End of story. Then y'all can have y'all wedding preparations later. Or he could have actually did it. Now, it's not like you're working anywhere. It's not like you need to take off and plan these things. You're already off. You see what I'm saying? So what's the wait? Tell us what the come up is. Because we, we can't seem to get it together. And evidently you can't get it together. You don't have the funds in there to do what you need to do. And ain't no sense of waiting for Bravo to pay for it. If y'all so much in love with it, one another. And y'all want to make it legal. Because you're saying your family has set y'all date and everything. You need your family to set your date. You didn't need no Bravo money. You just need to go on out there and get married if that's what you want. And then maybe Bravo can throw y'all in a honeymoon, uh, what do you call it, sitcom. I'm not sitcom, but a honeymoon special spinoff or something to that degree. Then you coming back from your honeymoon trying to get in your house and, and decorate it or do whatever you're going to do with it. Show your life after the fact. But no, you already in a decorated house. All right. So why do we need, why do we need a wedding? Because he couldn't handle you when y'all had those fights going on in Mexico. Okay. So it just is what it is. Portia just, you know, she wants to give us facts. But they don't really come up nothing. But anyway, to end it pretty much, she says that um, they go back to his house for a nap, nightcap. They end up watching Family Feud. Um, you know, playing like they're a guest host of this, that, and the third. And he gets uh, a phone call or a text. And he starts not paying attention to her, but start texting back. First thing I'm saying, uh-oh, it's a girl on the line, it's a woman on the line, whatever. You got to get rid of you, but from what she expresses in the book, it's something happening, it's something happening with one of his businesses, and it must be in close proximity because he leaves her in his uh, home to go handle whatever he needed to go handle because she thought it, their date was going to be cut short, this, that, and the third, but he told her, no, stay here, you know, enjoy yourself, and I'll be back real soon. 
And of course, she thought that was the accolade she had uh, accomplished with him because he let her stay in his pad by herself and trusted her not to do anything or, or leave with anything. And she thought that was just special. <laughs> like, girl, what are you, 20? Are you in your teenage years? Are you kidding me? You've been married before. You've been divorced before. And you've had several relationships prior to Dennis. Any man with any thought that thought you were a grain of salt, they don't care. They don't have anything lucrative in there that you can um, go home with. And from my understanding, how you, you were saying, you are already solidified. You don't, you're not a steal or anything. And, you know, he don't have anything for you to go really steal. Okay? But it just is what it is. He wanted to lay with you. He had got you in the mood. And he knew he was going to get that booty. All right? But uh, when he did come back, they got relaxed and stuff, and then he found his way to put his head down on her lap. Uh, so I'm guessing they were both on the sofa, and she might have had her, um, what do you call it? She might have been sitting on the edge or whatever, and he laid down on the sofa, and he pretty much laid in her lap. And he ended up saying three magical, three magical words that just sent her into the stratosphere. He told her, uh, let me just read it to you. So you won't think I'm lying. She said, after handling whatever he needed to handle that dream, Dennis was now back on his couch beside me. By this time in the evening, Dennis had leaned over and placed his head in my lap. With his eyes piercing through his thick rimmed glasses, Dennis said, I love you. I didn't say a word, but my face must have registered my shock. So Dennis said, I do. I'll show you. I love you. So now I'm thinking, okay, dude, you're either drunk or crazy. No, I'm not messing around, he said, reading my mind. Okay, Dennis, I will remind you in I will remind you of this in the morning. Uh that you said this. And then it goes from that space to her going, he, he, who, who, you know, breathing. Uh, scenario thing when you're having contractions real bad and you have to get to that hospital before the baby comes out she went straight fast forward from that situation right there where they just had one date or maybe a couple of dates and i'm just saying one date because how she's describing it in the book they had several missed phone calls they connected on some phone calls and they had some late phone calls they had a dinner it went back to his apartment or his loft pad and then he said i love you <laughs> and that was it and then we go to the baby scene now how disastrous is that i'm like are you kidding me only thing you wanted us to know is that he said i love you first and he really meant it or was that something that he actually said to most women to get into their panties for that night i don't know not my business this is just what you said so y'all y'all put down in them comments and let me know do y'all really believe this crap about he told her he loved her first or did he say it just to get in her panties y'all let me know because that sounds like a line that fell portia fell for and she probably gave up the goodies that night as well and i will see y'all next video y'all take care now Bye bye